name is Erica Munoz. I am 33 years old. I was born and raised here in Phoenix, Arizona. My home consisted of a single parent. Um, I had two siblings. We went through homelessness, hunger, grew up in poverty. My mom did her best that she could um, as she thought that was best as being a parent. Sexual and physical abuse took place in my home at the age of seven. I definitely was a good kid in school. Um, I had dreams of becoming an actress. Uh, I want to be super famous in Hollywood. Unfortunately, um, right after graduation, my brother had passed away due to violence. At that moment, I didn't realize that I had lost myself in the process. And I had entered in a relationship of eight years. Um, and I had three beautiful boys, but that relationship consisted of being codependent. Um, it dealt with a lot of physical, emotional abuse, mental abuse. There came a point in my life where I knew there wasn't a way out. Things were hard. I was going to night school for medical administrative assistant. Um, I was trying to do my best to keep a job and then raise the children and then make sure that he was happy. So in that process, I decided to solicitate um, for survival as well as an escape. And in that time, I had gotten arrested in 2013. And while I was sitting there, um, I was told that I would need to testify against my children's father. Um, if not, I definitely would have been made an example of. With that being said, um, I prayed on it, sat on it, and I knew that my only way out was going to be to not say anything. I felt like prison was going to be my safe haven, as weird as that sounds, so I didn't say anything. He walked, got no charges, and I did seven years inside the women's penitentiary. I've been out a year now, as of last year, April 3rd, 2020. I was super excited to start my life. I was so ready just to go ahead and come out as a free person, no relationship, starting healthy. And I come out and they're like, nope, lockdown, wear masks. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. I just did it for the last seven years. I got this. And then reality hit and it was really hard because you're still connected to the women inside of there and you don't realize that everything around you is different. Your friends, your family, the places around you, nothing is the same. You're not even the same. So it was really, really hard emotionally to transition. I felt alone. Um, I felt discouraged coming out to nothing. So that was hard. For me, the Impact Arrow has had has been amazing. They offer everything that you can think of. They're there to mentor you right out the gates. They offer you financial advisement. They offer you job placements. They do their best to see what housing placements are out there for you. Uh, for me personally, I am super grateful for the fact that they've offered me emotional support my first year out. Um, that's hard on anyone and no one really understands that. When you're coming out the gates, you prepare and prepare and prepare and no one prepares you for the fact that you can't prepare for mental and emotional effects that you're going to have. So to have Arrowette be there as a support system has been really, really impactful for my life. If I can give my younger self advice, it would be to don't be afraid to use your voice. Just to know that you're not alone and to ask for help. And just remember that no matter your circumstances, you always have a choice. For me, second chance means everything, especially when you're coming out of the um, criminal justice System. It means that I get an opportunity to show the person that I am today to not just my family and friends, but to employers, people who are willing to take a chance on me. Um, it's given me an opportunity to recreate 
myself in a healthy way um, to show people that you can make poor choices, but you learn from those and you keep going no matter what society decides to label you as. I would say I completely understand um, you being cautious. Um, it's a liability. You don't know who I am. You do see what is on a piece of paper, um, but I promise you that I will do my best to show you that I am nothing like the paper says and that giving me an opportunity, I definitely will work hard, um, do my best to outshine everybody. Um, I will not be a disappointment. Um, you not giving me an opportunity, I feel like you're missing out on something amazing. I would say some of the challenges that I have faced um, within the year, definitely my number one is housing. When you come out and you have a criminal history, people are very cautious of being open-minded and giving somebody a chance on renting. And I totally, 100% can understand that and agree to it. Um, so that's been really hard for me. Um, and it's not that I cannot pay my bills or I don't have the down payment. It's just simply because of my criminal background. Um, I would have to say another challenge for me has been to realize that I'm doing this second life without family my family have become or complete strangers who are now all that I have um, so that's been really hard and I think the last thing for me is just um, it's been a challenge to not be able to have my kids around but I know that they're healthy and happy and they're all together so that's fine but that's been a really hard struggle and I appreciate my friends that I do have in my life and my mentors um, who are able to help me get through that process. Being a storyteller has definitely helped me in a lot of ways. For one, I came out um, with a lot of boundaries and I was not going to say or do a lot of things when becoming a storyteller. But as I noticed, every time I did it, I was growing, um, I was still learning, and I was healing. And it's important because you're not fully healed when you come out. You deal with a lot um, emotionally and internally. So being able to tell my story in hopes that it'll help someone else has definitely been the greatest gift that I could have received. Well, um, for me, it's been my nine-month-old American Reynolds Pimple. His name is Rosé. Um, I got him as a Christmas gift and I got him for my PTSD and my anxiety is the best gift in the world as well as a headache. Um, he's definitely cold dependent. Um, separation anxiety is off the chain and he actually causes me PTSD and he definitely makes me want to just lie down and not breathe sometimes. But without him, for sure, the last nine months, I wouldn't have gotten through the times that I have. He's definitely my go-to guy. I would say that my story has helped others. Um, for me, it was starting on the inside. I decided that once I was at a good healing stage in my life and just knowing where I was going and where I wanted to go, I decided to use my experiences and help the women inside there. Um, a lot of the women are lost. You don't really get a lot of help. Um, I look at it as self-help, right? So I was able to hold an emotional intelligence class as well as a focus group um, to help women transition out, um, which led me to as soon as I came out, I wanted to jump in and just try and save the world one day at a time. I 
love writing. I am an emotional writer. It's very therapeutic for me. It's a way that I am able to tell my story. It's a way of that I actually express well in. Um, so I want to be able to just share that with the world as well as I've always had um, a soft spot for helping others. It's what I do. It's what I, my happiness comes from seeing other people successful um, in ways that I can help. Um, I definitely see myself being a part of a women's domestic violence shelter, just helping women, even young girls, do their best to not go down the path that I did. And if they do, knowing that they do have somebody on the other side waiting for them.